Welcome, 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 my friends, to a new edition of More Bad News, brought to you, as always, by Camel Cigarettes. Take the Camel Challenge, smoke Camels for 30 days, and see for yourself what a difference Camels can make in your life. Well, my friends, uh, it's been another week of very bad news. Uh, you know, uh, I, I, but I, I need to remark on I, I'm I'm doing the show here really freshly groomed uh, I uh, have uh, uh, not exactly joined the Marines but I have adopted uh, their style of haircut uh, so uh, and I had a, a zoom call this past week with my brothers and it was great seeing them all uh, my brothers are all very different people. Uh, you wouldn't know that we're related by looking at us. We don't look alike. We're certainly very different people in character, temperament, political orientation, religious orientation. You name it. We have nothing in common other than the fact that we've been brothers, uh, and that we are brothers and that we have known each other longer than anybody else on the planet. Um, and we're all retired now. So we're all done. Nobody is out there trying to make it any longer. Uh, it's uh, a lot like the song and fiddler on the roof. After all this time, you know, putting up with each other, I guess this is what you call love. Uh, and I had the best conversation with my brother, Ed. Uh, uh, Ed is 81. He uh, lives in Texas. Uh, and um, uh, and uh, I was just uh, talking to him. Uh, he, he goes to, you know, he does gun shows. He still works. Uh, and uh, and he wears his Mogan David, and I know he's very proud of uh, the fact that he's Jewish. Uh, and uh, and so I asked him if he ever gets harassed, and he says, "I come from Arizona, you know, uh, where they say that it doesn't pay to carry a gun if people can't see it, and in Texas it doesn't pay to carry a small gun, so you know he carries a cannon, you know, <laughs> on his hip, and no one uh, insults him, you know. And so um, and I realized that." Well, that's the solution. I mean, you know, I, I keep reading on Reddit people being harassed for wearing N95 masks. And all you need to do is carry, if everyone were to carry a very large uh, pistol on their hip uh, and it was visible to everyone, then everyone would be very polite to one another. Uh, and it, it was just the solution to our social problems more guns uh, and camel cigarettes, of course. Uh, so anyway, um, last week, uh, I was seeing that it's one month now since President Maduro brazenly stole the election in Venezuela. And last week, Trump suggested to Musk that they might flee to Venezuela if the election doesn't go his way. Uh, understand that the Republicans are not trying to win the next election. They're preparing to seize control of the government. Maduro is an inspiration for Republicans. He's a demonstration of how an authoritarian movement can seize control of a government even when they lose elections. The U.S. Republican Party wins elections by gerrymandering the politi and political manipulation of electoral boundaries uh, uh, to create huge advantages for an authoritarian minority. Uh, there's a, a great book that warned us about this uh, quite a while ago. Uh, let me let me just uh, I'll, I'll share my screen and I will show you um, the here it is. Um, it's um, uh, it's it's this one uh, rat fucked. Uh, I have a better picture of it here. Uh, the true story behind the secret plan to steal American democracy. It's a really good book. I was looking for it. I couldn't find it on my shelves. I. You know, I, I find these things, uh, to, I'm looking for books all the time that I know I have. I just can't remember where I put it. Uh, so um, uh, uh, so this was a 2016 book that discussed the efforts of the Republican uh, political party, uh, including uh, people like Karl Rove, uh, to exploit redistricting processes around the United States in order to gain greater control of the American Congress under a project called Red Map at the time. Now, the project is now called Project 2025, and it has uh, been put together by the Federalist Society. But the point is that the Republicans have never been about popular elections. They are laser focused on obtaining power and keeping power. The Democrats think in terms of winning elections by making grand promises and whipping up enthusiasm. You know, it's very hard to keep people happy and enthusiastic for two months. Uh, it is much easier 
uh, to stoke a sense of grievance uh, and seize power through manipulation. Authoritarians only win popular authoritarians only win popular elections after they have already seized control. Hitler got 33 percent of the vote in 1932, but in 1930, uh, uh, after March 1933, he got 98.8% after the, uh, the Nazis had taken control. Saddam Hussein is another one of these great popular leaders, along with Kim Jong-un. Um, Trump aspires to that level of popularity. In Florida, where uh, an amendment is on the ballot to ensure abortion rights, amendment number four, abortions are, are perfectly legal in Florida today, as long as they are performed uh, in the first six weeks of pregnancy. Uh, of course, by the uh, the sixth week of the pregnancy, the embryo is the, sign of a, uh, the size of a baked bean, and most women are not even aware that they are pregnant. Polls indicate that 70% of Florida's voters, nearly 70%, even this is Republican voters, they're very conservative voters, yet uh, a, a overwhelming majority of Florida Republican voters, uh, voters overall, uh, favor amendment number four, uh, which would restore abortion rights. In other words, uh, it's just a terribly unpopular position, even though the Republicans are the dominant party. The real advantage they have is that small groups like the Federal Society can put together strategies for e effectively carrying out seizures of control. People who worry about climate change and rising oceans uh, are often worried about how long is it going to take for the ice to melt or for the temperature to rise or the, the, the amount of carbon in the atmosphere. Uh, you know, and, and they calculate how much time is left for us to avert catastrophe, tipping points that we can somehow, if, you know, this is the, this is the if thing, if, if, you know, we could uh, reduce carbon now, but then by 2050, yada, yada. But I, I, th I think in terms of the next election and of what is already baked into our political system, it could all be over by November. We don't need to wait for the oceans to rise and for you know and for the carbon in the air to increase. We can accelerate the process of actively destroying the planet by our own uh, political decisions or by our own uh, desire to move uh, towards uh, uh, ex extinction. And and the big news this week is Sudan. This is a, here. This is the the Economist. Uh, you know, this is the they always you know capture the big news of this of, of the week, and uh, Sudan is the big story that isn't on anyone's mind. It's the story of an impending mass starvation that we aren't even attempting to deal with. You know, at least Gaza is on people's minds. Sudan represents collective Alzheimer's. And speaking of the news that's on no one's mind, there was a story in Haaretz last week. Uh, that uh, let me let me get that one out too. To, to, I have it here. Um, uh, okay, I'll share my screen. I'll show it to you. And here it is. So uh, now in power, Israel's messianic far right is dead serious about rebuilding the temple. I've been saying this for a long time. Uh, recruitment of Kohanim, breeding of red heifers, architectural plans. I mean, there, get ready, get ready to re to build the third temple on the, uh, uh, the, the mountain, on the top where the Dome of the Rock is. I mean, let's get on with this. And they are dead serious about it. Of course, you know, it's like, wait, that's not something that anybody wants to discuss. So you'll notice that extinction and starvation and collapse are really not the issues that are being discussed that are part of this election because the election has nothing to do with agency, with our ability to change the course uh, of our future. Uh, so uh, it was just another week of very bad news as we move ever closer towards what is inevitably going to be really nasty stuff coming 
towards us. However, as I've said in the past, <laughs> we've got another week here. And I'm sure this week's gonna, we're gonna be able to get through this week. So keep your head down, uh, stay safe, and uh, and take up the calendar. Ch- I'll see you next week uh, with more bad news. <laughs>